Thank you to Blinkist for sponsoring this video. We all know horseshoes are supposed to be lucky. From featuring in our favorite marshmallow-filled cereal to hanging above barn doors to being on necklaces and charm bracelets, horseshoes are one of the most recognizable good luck charms in the world. But why are they considered lucky at all? Before we answer that question, here's a quick word from our sponsor, and that sponsor is Blinkist. As consumers of educational YouTube, I know my audience is always interested in learning new things. And Blinkist is a wonderful app that helps you do just that. Blinkist offers condensed summaries of the best nonfiction books on the market, and gives you the most important points and takeaways in 15-minute text and audio explainers called Blinks. There are over 5,000 books in 27 different categories to choose from, from history to current events to personal growth. With Blinkist, you can understand powerful ideas in only 15 minutes. Using Blinkist, I've just listened to the summary of 1491 by Charles C. Mann, which describes the history of indigenous Americans pre-contact with Europeans and busts a lot of myths that we still often have about them. I think it's vitally important for us who live on the American continent to understand the history of this land before Columbus. So thank you to Blinkist for helping me find one of my new favorite books. Right now, Blinkist has a special offer just for you guys. Click the link in the description to start your 7-day free trial with Blinkist and get 25% off of a premium membership. Thanks again to Blinkist, and now back to the video. If you grew up in a certain type of church, there's a chance you may have heard the story of St. Dunstan. He was a 10th century English clergyman who at the pinnacle of his ministry became the Archbishop of Canterbury, the premier bishop in England. But before he was ordained as a priest, he was said to have been a blacksmith. The legend goes that when Dunstan was a blacksmith, he was visited by a man who asked Dunstan to reshoe his horse. Dunstan recognizing that the man was, in fact, actually the devil, calmly agreed. And when the devil wasn't looking, Dunstan hammered a still, red-hot horseshoe to the devil's hoof, rather than the horse's. The devil screamed in pain and begged Dunstan to remove the shoe. Dunstan agreed on one condition, that the devil would never enter a house with a horseshoe nailed above the door. The devil, still howling in pain, agreed, and rode off, vowing to keep the promise, as to not be burned again. This is a very nice story, but I don't have to tell you that it's just a legend. It seems to have popped up in around the 12th century, a couple centuries after Dunstan's death. But as good a fairy tale as it is, it is in fact not the origin of the lucky horseshoe. The charm goes back further than the 12th century or even the 10th century, and the story of St. Dunstan and the Devil was probably a way of Christianifying an older pagan tradition. So if it didn't come from St. Dunstan, where did the tradition come from? As with most folkloric traditions and superstitions, it's not easy to determine where the lucky horseshoe started. That said, scholars have a few theories that are pretty well accepted. They can be broken down into the horseshoe's shape, the material, and the maker. First, the shape. Horseshoes are in the shape of a crescent. Crescents, relating of course to the moon, have long been seen as sacred and lucky symbols. In many cultures around the world, crescents, as well as other two-horned shapes, have been used as lucky amulets. Second, the material. Horseshoes were traditionally made of pure iron, and so, in the Middle Ages, horseshoes were one of the easiest sources of the metal. Iron has had a long history as a protective material. In Celtic and Northern European society, it was said to protect against malevolent spirits and fairies. And in the Middle East, the metal was said to ward off jinn. The oldest superstition I can find about iron comes from ancient Egypt, where iron was known as devil's bone. Whether this Egyptian tradition inspired the later superstitions is unknown, but the point is that it was ancient and widespread. Lastly, the maker. 
In both Greco-Roman and Germanic mythologies, blacksmiths were seen as magical craftsmen. Hephaestus, known as Vulcan by the Romans, was the god of blacksmithing and forging, so blacksmiths, unlike all other craftsmen, had an Olympian to call their own. In Scandinavia, blacksmiths were known to be magical due to their working with fire and using it to turn what looked like dirt to a layperson to hard metal. Whatever the true origin of the superstition is, the idea of it being a good luck charm as opposed to a talisman to ward off mischievous fairies or demons seems to be a relatively modern practice probably starting in the 19th century, as all mentions of the horseshoe before then is as a ward against spirits or witches. And there you go, a quick history of the lucky horseshoe. Thanks again to Blinkist for sponsoring this video. Remember to click the link in the description to start your free trial and get 25% off a premium membership. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye!